Hello and welcome to Keep It Classical, to this introduction to classical music. I'm going to start by sharing something that you might not know, but is very much true. You love classical music. The truth is that everyone loves classical music, even if you don't know it yet. So let's get started. So let's talk about what this term means. What do we mean when we use the term classical music? All music can basically be grouped into three major categories, classical, popular, and folk music. Let me be really clear that these categories are not based on the validity or worth of this music, but simply its origins and place in society. Music is music and inherently of some worth. Let's start by looking at each of these categories. Folk music, is music that has no known author or composer, but is part of the psyche of a community. More often than not, this music is taught or learned by rote, and there are sometimes dozens of different versions of the same tune or words. Examples of this include music played at cultural events, rodeos, and whatever fiddle tune Chris Thiele is playing on Live From Here. Popular music is music of the populace, or that a large portion of the population is aware of and enjoys. Examples of this include music played on the radio, at Coachella, and whatever you're listening to today. Classical music is music that is no longer popular, and with a few exceptions, probably requires some training or literacy in order to perform. Examples of this can be found in music played in today's concert halls, opera houses, in film scores, and in many churches. Now, while I said that classical music is no longer popular, it still permeates our lives, whether it's in a commercial, or on a plane, or in a commercial about a plane, It surrounds us constantly. Whether you realize it or not, it is a part of your life, even if it's not popular. Now, when you see this categorization of music into three parts, it's important to remember two things. Number one, music can migrate between these categories. Music isn't static and will often go back and forth between these categories. That's important to remember because while we think about classical music, we need to remember that at one point, much of this music was popular and indeed that all music was once new. You know that scene from Star Trek Into Darkness, when they start playing that Beastie Boys song, Sabotage? Let's make some noise. That's a good choice. How does McCoy and Spock refer to that music? Is that classical music? Yes, Doctor, it would seem to be. Why do they call the Beastie Boys classical music? Because the story takes place in the year 2259, 265 years after Sabotage was released. With that perspective, what music was being written 265 years before the film's release in 2013? Turns out it was the year 1748, and Handel had just written his Oratorio Solomon, and Bach was composing the final touches of his B minor mass. More on them later. When we listen to the Beastie Boys now, it sounds loud, raucous, and modern. And from our perspective, it doesn't sound anything like classical music. 
When we talk about classical music, we have to go back and listen to it with context in mind. Some of these same words that we describe the Beastie Boys, loud, raucous, and modern, have been used to describe some famous classical pieces that we think of now as stuffy and dated. By the way, I just want to point out that listening to Sabotage today still holds up really well, even though it's now 25 years old. Some of you watching weren't even born in 1994. Anyway, the second thing to remember is that music in these large cross sections are not a monolith. I mean, we are packing all of popular music into one category, and there's no way that sounds all the same. And that's how we should think about classical music as well. It encompasses centuries of music and contains huge amounts of variety. Let's say that you went to a symphony once and you heard them play Mozart, and you didn't really like it all that much. I mean, let's hope that's not the case, but let's just say for this example, that you probably came to the conclusion that you didn't enjoy classical music because you didn't enjoy that concert of Mozart. But by saying that you don't like classical music because you don't enjoy Mozart is a lot like saying you don't like pop music because you don't enjoy, I don't know, Nickelback. There's a lot more to pop music than just Nickelback. I mean, if all pop music was like Nickelback, I think that most of us would avoid it. Let me show you what I mean. What we commonly refer to as classical music encompasses music as early as the 1200s to today. And we're basically putting music that sounds like this. And like this. And like this. Into the same genre. These three examples couldn't be more different from each other. And yet we call all of them classical music. There's a big difference between Perrotin, Beethoven, and Schoenberg. Just like there's a big difference between Johnny Cash, Led Zeppelin, and Beyonce. It's a single label for well over 800 years worth of music. Now the term classical music is also a bit problematic. The term refers to classical Greek and Roman architecture and literature. The term also refers to one epoch of music that lasted between the 1730s and the 1810s. But for some reason this term also came to represent the music of all the epochs together. That's confusing enough, even to seasoned professionals. But it also doesn't do a very good job of describing what it is exactly. This problem is only compounded by some terms that people have tried to use as replacements for the term classical music, like Western art music or literate music. The problem with these is that not all of the music in this category is Western, or in other words, from Europe or North America. A major example being Japanese imperial court music. Also, the term art can imply that popular music or folk music isn't art, which many people, including myself, would very much disagree with. The term literate music can seem like a good choice, implying that literate music requires training and a sense of literacy in a written musical language. The issue, however, is that the term literate can be rather charged in the idea that literate is good and illiterate is bad. It also ignores the fact that art music from India wasn't written down at all, but transmitted by rote. It also ignores the fact that some popular music is in fact written down and requires some sort of literacy in order to replicate it. So what's the answer to this? The truth is I don't really have one, hence the name of my channel is Keep It Classical. For our purposes, I'm going to keep referring to this music as classical music, as that's the term that most people associate with this type of music. And stick with the idea that a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. If you have a better name for classical music, by all means, share your idea in the comments below. That's all for now. If you like this video, make sure to check out my playlist for absolute beginners, or my playlist on special topics. In the meantime, Keep it classical.